Alright, sa ating 110 live viewers, please turn your Bibles. I hope you have your Bibles with you. Don't just look at me. Look at your Bibles. Alright? <laughs> Appreciate everyone who is uh, watching sa ating 113 live viewers. Stay with me until the end. At uh, wala hong bibitaw hanggang matapos natin ang pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos at ang pananalangin. Okay, dito po sa Joshua, tayo po ay titingin sa Joshua chapter 5. Okay, if you have your Bibles with you, Joshua chapter 5 po tayo. At ganito po ang sabi sa Joshua chapter 5. Sa simulan po natin ang pagbasa dito po sa verse uh, 13 And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand and Joshua went unto him and said unto him Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said Nay but as captain of the host of of the Lord am I now come and Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him what saith my Lord unto his servant and the captain of the Lord of hosts said unto Joshua loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place where on thou standest is holy and Joshua did so This morning, our subject is about the captain of the Lord's host. The captain of the Lord's host. Ito pong chapter 5 opens that the nation of Israel had finished the crossing of the Jordan River and is now in the promised land. The first thing we discover is that all the kings of all the different nations that made up the Canaanites were absolutely terrified of what was what had happened at the Jordan River. Kumalat na po yung balita na nakapasok na ang children of Israel sa Canaan, the promised land. And all the kings of all the nations in that land were terrified, especially nung nabalitaan nila paanong nangyari sa Jordan River. At that point, four important things happen pagtawid nila ng Jordan River. Una po, the men were circumcised. Pangalawa, the Passover was celebrated. Pangatlo, the manna from heaven stopped. At pangapat, Joshua had a most interesting encounter with the captain of the Lord's of the Lord's host. Although limited tayo sa time, gusto kong tingnan natin tong apat na ito. Una, yung kanila pong circumcision. As a military leader, Joshua would have to have at least a bit concerned about the circumcision of all the men. That process would have debilitated the men and would have left the nation defenseless. Kung ikaw yung military leader, ikaw yung pinuno ng iyong mga sandatahang lakas, lulusog kayo sa labanan, ipapasircumcise mo ba yung iyong mga kalalakihan? Siyempre hindi, di ba? Kasi, hindi eh pangihinaan sila ng katawan hindi sila magiging handa para lumaban kasi meron silang karamdaman na aabutin siguro ng mga 3 to 5 days bago sila makarecover pero dahil iniutos ng Diyos hindi po nagdalawang isip si Joshua to have all the men in his army be circumcised as God commanded Since obviously, Joshua believed that God could sovereignly protect 
them. Circumcision was a token of the covenant that God made with Israel. The people of Israel were filled with the excitement and motivation of having miraculously crossed the Jordan. They apparently knew that the enemy was already afraid from the standpoint of their morale. So surely, it was a good time to strike. Many of the military leaders under Joshua's command may have been thinking, for goodness sake, let's not wait. Let's go and conquer. Now is the best time and the enemy are already afraid of us. But you see, in God's economy and purposes, there are spiritual values, priorities, and principles that are far greater than what we as human beings only desire. Looking at conditions from our perspective of deadlines, feeling the pressure to perform and accomplish things in order to please ourselves, hindi po dapat ang unahin ay yung ating mga sariling kagustuhan. Kung hindi yung kalooban pa rin ng Panginoon. That is why na-circumcise po sila. Sapagkat ito ang kalooban ng Diyos. Now, the next thing that happened after the circumcision is God told Joshua, there will never be manna anymore. God had provided all those Hebrews the manna they needed for over 40 years. And despite Israel's multiple rebellions and sinful choices in the wilderness, tuloy-tuloy lamang po ang provision ng Diyos nitong heavenly bread na ito. Pero ngayon pong pumasok na sila sa promised land, and they're about to eat of the fruit of the land, the manna would cease. You see, God was still providing for their nourishment. He was just not providing the manna anymore. Minsan po kasi mga minamahal, nagbabago-bago ang paraan ng Diyos to provide for us. So this time, there will be no manna anymore. But that doesn't mean that God would not provide for them anymore. The, the fourth thing that happened is a bit unusual. So nakita po natin, ano, yung pagsunod ni Joshua sa covenant sa Diyos, yung circumcision, despite that they wanted to fight already and conquer the land, sabi ni Joshua, teka, unahin natin yung covenant natin sa Diyos. They had the people circumcised. By the way, that is the second time. The first time they did that was during the time of Moses as a token of their covenant with God. Ngayon naman po, sa second generation, eto po, ginawa nila yung circumcision to reaffirm their covenant with God. The second thing that happened, nakita po natin, they celebrated the Passover at yung pag-celebrate po nila ng Passover ay yung kanilang pagpapasalamat sa Diyos after they had been circumcised. At ito pong pangatlo ay yung sinabi ng Diyos sa kanila, that they would have to believe His provision would continue despite that the manna would stop. At yung pang-apat is this unusual thing that Joshua met with the captain of the Lord of hosts. Ito po yung gusto kong sentrohan natin. Nung nagtagpo po sila ni Joshua, it begins in verse 13 and is a meeting between Joshua and the commander of the Lord's army. Nagtanong si Joshua doon sa commander of the Lord's army. Sabi niya sa lalaki na ito, Whose side are you in? And the man answered basically, I'm not siding on anybody. I am on my own side. And you should be on my side. That's actually what he said to Joshua. Kasi sabi ni Joshua, na kaninong panig ka? Sa aming kababapanig? O sa mga kalaban namin? 
ang sabi sa kanya ng captain of the Lord's host, wala akong pinapanigan. Ako ay nasa sarili kong panig. Kung gusto mo, sa akin ka pumanig. You be on my side. Sabi ng iba, ito raw ay anghel. Niisip nila si Mike, Michael the Archangel. That would be cool. Kasi si Michael the Archangel ang pinaka mahusay na mandirigmang anghel ng Panginoong Diyos. I'm quite convinced that it is Jesus Christ appearing in what is called a Christophany. Ano yung Christophany? This is the pre-appearances of our Lord Jesus Christ appearing in a body who is the second person in the Trinity. The commander of the Lord's army revealed himself to Joshua and Joshua correctly concluded that he saw God and that he was to see himself as a servant. Kaya alam ko hindi po ito ang lamang sapagkat nung nakita at nakilala ni Joshua kung kanino siya nakaharap, si Joshua po nagpatira pa. At kung ito'y anghel, kagaya ng anghel sa Revelation, tiyak ko ititindig niya si Joshua. Sapagkat Diyos lamang po ang tumatanggap ng pagsamba at Diyos lamang po tayo dapat nagpapatira pa. Hindi tayo dapat lumuluhod kung kani-kaninong mga santo o anghel o santa o mga sino mang Diyos-Diyosan. Diyos lamang po ang niluluhuran. Kaya nga po, isang araw, kahit na ayaw o gusto nating lumuhod sa Diyos, isang araw, kahit na ayaw nating kilalanin na si Jesus Christ ay Diyos na nagkatawang tao, isang araw, sabi po ng Bible, every knee shall bow of things in heaven of things in earth, of things under the earth, and that every man shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you know what that means? It means that everyone will acknowledge that this Jesus of Nazareth, whom they think was just a human being, they will soon find out that He is the God incarnate. Ito po yung nakita ni Joshua. Nakita niya si Jesus sa kanyang pre-appearance. And Joshua fell and worshipped him. The Lord told Joshua, take off your sandals. Do you remember that's the same thing that God told Moses when Moses saw the burning bush and Moses was attempting to come near the bush and God told him, Take off your sandals, for the place where thou standest is holy. And Moses recognized that it was God. Here, the same thing happened. Pinaalis ng Diyos kay Joshua ang kanyang pang, pangsapin sa paa. This act was a familiar sign of worship and submission. And appears in at least two other places when God revealed himself to men. It happened to Jacob at Bethel in Genesis chapter 28 and to Moses at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. The commanders of the Lord's army is none other but our, G our Lord Jesus Christ. He was identical to what God said to Moses from the burning bush. I am what I am. This place was sanctified by the presence of the Lord. And so Joshua had to remove his sandals because at the presence of the Lord, Joshua should realize that he is standing on a holy ground. In the presence of the Lord, these earthly places were suddenly transformed into hallowed ground. And we should have great humility if we are to stand before his presence. The fact that God chose to reveal himself here to Joshua was further evidence that the conquest of the promised land was to be accomplished by God's power alone and not by human strength. The army of the Lord of hosts are going to fight for Israel 
I love that. Kaya nung sinabi ni Joshua, kaninong panig ka, kakampi, sabi ng Diyos sa kanya, I am on my own side. I am the captain of the Lord of hosts. In other words, hindi ako ang kakampi sa iyo. Ikaw ang kumampi sa akin kung gusto mo magtagumpay. Hindi ako ang magpapasakop sa iyo. Ikaw ang magpasakop sa akin kung gusto niyo magtagumpay. Ang hirap po kasi sa atin mga minamahal, ang kala natin kailangan para tayo ay maging matagumpay at mapagpala sa ating buhay. Ang gusto natin, samahan tayo ng Diyos. Ang gusto natin, ang Diyos sumama sa atin, pumanig sa atin, kumampi sa atin. Pero hindi ho. Kung gusto nating magtagumpay sa ating mga hinaharap sa buhay, hindi ang Diyos ang sasama, na, sasama sa atin. Hindi ang Diyos ang kakampi sa atin. It's the other way around. Tayo ang sumama sa Diyos. Tayo ang kumampi sa Diyos. Tayo ang pumanig sa Diyos. We must be on the Lord's side and not the other way around. Because God should always take the lead. God should always have the authority. God should always be above all. Hindi po pwedeng yung gusto mo ang masusunod. Hindi po pwedeng si Joshua ang masusunod. Kung siya ang general ng army ng Israel, ang Panginoon, ang commander of the Lord's army. And there could be no two commanders. Hindi pwedeng dalawa ang magiging puno at pinuno. Kaya sa buhay natin, you have to make a choice. It's either Jesus is the Lord of your life, Or He is not Lord at all. Kaya nga ang sabi ng Panginoon, Why call you me Lord and do not the things which I say? Who is the Lord of your life? Who is the captain of your soul? Nalala ko yung katwira ng mga unbeliever. Sabi nila, I am the master of my will. I am the captain of my soul. If you are a child of God, if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, and you want to live a victorious life, You should change that kind of mindset. It should not be you who will lead, who will be the captain of your soul. It must be Jesus Christ. Bow down your knees to His presence and let Him lead your life. Ito po ang natutunan ni Joshua dito when he faced the captain of the Lord's host. The army of the Lord appears to be the most powerful army in the universe and they can only be on the winning side kung gusto po ni Joshua na sila ay magtagumpay kailangan pumanig sila sa Panginoon naalala niya siguro yung panahon ni Moses sinabi ni Moses sa children of Israel who is on the Lord's side so hindi ho sa side natin, hindi ho sa side ng kalaban natin, ang dapat nating isipin, doon tayo sa side ng Panginoon. It is mentioned that Jesus Christ is this captain of the Lord of hosts. Alam nyo, mga minamahal, kung gusto po natin na tayo'y magtagumpay, seryosong usapan po, Let Jesus be the captain of your soul. So nakita ni, G- ni Joshua si Jesus with his sword thrown. And Joshua went, him, went to him, bowed down to him in submission. Jesus told Joshua that he did not come to take sides, but to take over. I like that. Jesus Christ will not take sides. He will take over. How we need to let the Lord Jesus Christ to take over our lives today in our own spiritual battles. Let God rule in your life. Let the peace of God rule in your life. We can only be effective in our spiritual battles of life when we submit to God's presence and authority. So, this morning, I encourage you today, surrender your life to God. 
Sabi nga po, neither yield yourselves as servants to obey and to unrighteousness, but yield yourselves to God. Yield. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. There could be no other way to win your spiritual battle. There could be no other way for you to overcome unless you let the captain of the Lord's host be the one to be in authority over your life. Let God take over your life. Let God have the rule over you. Sana po sa umagang ito, if you're not yet sure that you're going to heaven, if you're not yet sure that you are saved from the fires of hell, do not trust your religion for that matter. Do not trust your own righteousness for that matter. Do not trust your religious leaders for that matter. Trust only Jesus Christ for your salvation. For there's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. One person asked the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 16, verse 30 to 31, What must I do to be saved? And Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You see, salvation is free, and God is providing it to anyone who will believe His Son, Jesus Christ. That is why Paul said in Romans 6.23, The wages of sin is death, death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Have you accepted that gift already? Have you received the gift of eternal life already? How can I receive it, Pastor? It can be received by faith. By receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are receiving the gift of eternal life. Let it be so to you today. Huwag mo nang palipasin ang ibang araw. You never know kung hanggang kailan may pagkakataon kang tanggapin ang Panginoon bilang iyong tagapagintas. Thank you. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan. At salamat po for watching. Sana po na-encourage tayo. Let God rule your life. He is sovereign. He is the captain of the Lord's host. Let Jesus not only be your Savior, but also the Lord of your life. We are not perfect. We cannot become sinless. But we can always yield and surrender ourselves to God. God bless. Let us all pray. Panalangin po natin ang ating mga prayer requests at tayo po ay maging encouragement sa isa't isa. Okay? Tayo po yung manalangin.